Today we're going to be looking at a few stats regarding computer science degrees. Should you get one? Why? Why not? When does it make sense? And when doesn't it make sense? There's a, Not everything in life is black and white, and that goes the same with getting a computer science degree. Let's dive into it. So, as a, as a blanket statement, and mind you, not everything in life is black and white, which is why I wanted to do this video, but generally speaking, you do want to have a computer science degree when you're going into the field, and there's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, one, it's one of the best degrees you can get. Um, and we'll, we'll show some stats based off that, but it's also one of the fastest growing, the industries that it revolve around, there is the typical entry level education, and this is going off the US Bureau of Labor Statistics, is a bachelor's degree. That doesn't mean it's the only way, and that doesn't mean that it's that maybe it's right for you. I know it wasn't right for me. I, I made it to the uh, towards the end of my junior year before I dropped out, and there, you know, I'm not one in a million. There are other self-taught developers that are going about this, but um, computer science as a degree is a very good degree. Uh, we're looking at software developers because it's one of the more large. Uh, category of jobs. So let's just talk about that for a quick second before we dive into a little bit of the the negative aspects of it or the the more the more controversial stuff. So in terms of jobs, number of jobs, and this is based off 2014, there's there's a ton of jobs. If you see a million jobs in anything in the US Bureau of Labor Statistics that it has a median income of 102,000, there's not too many. And the uh, there's a million jobs, and it's growing by 17% uh, over the next two years. I think that's actually probably on the low end. I think that's going to be increasing. But the, the point being, it's growing much faster than the average job out there, and it's hard to keep up with the supply of competent developers. And to get a computer science degree, and mind you, you're not going to be making $102,000. This is the middle part. So let's say you're mid intermediate developer. That's probably the middle the medians and middle most part so that's probably where you're going to land i think that's a, a fair statement but the average person is going to need a bachelor's degree to break into the field to get that big break to continue um to to make you know fifty dollars an hour so 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 forth um but not a, as i mentioned not everything is black and white so let's talk about some of the 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 negative aspects of computer science here. So uh, as of 2016, and I'm, I'm going to guess in 2017 and 2018, uh, we'll, f we'll find out as this year wraps up and the next year continues on, the student debt for the average uh, college grad is $37,172 $37, per person. So that means that the average person is graduating with a year's worth salary of debt. If you're making about let's say 60 grand, which is the average uh, computer science student uh, starting salary. And mind you, I, I've known developers who have started uh, out of my, my uh, old school, Cal State Los Angeles, where some have gone and they, they started at 45 and some started at 80. And so it depends, right? But um, with the average person starting at 60, $37,000 of debt, if you're living at home, and not everyone is, but let's say in a situation where you're living at home and you don't have to pay rent, after taxes, if you basically gave them 80 cents on every dollar that went into your pocket, you could be clear of your student debt in a year. That's that's a lot of money to give away. Not give away, but that's a lot of... It's a very unrealistic situation for a lot of people, right? And it's one of those things where... Only because the starting salary of computer science majors and of the growth in that field, right? A lot of these other fields, such as human humanities and social sciences, you're basically at a $37,000 starting salary after spending four plus years of your life, $37,000 of debt. To get a degree in that doesn't even really make a lot of sense uh, <laughs> from, from a number standpoint, right? Um, but my, my standpoint on college is you're there to get skills, to be... A, a valued uh, employee to land a job. Some people have a, a much more, uh, I don't want to say liberal, but a different opinion where you're going to get an education. You're going to expand your mind. I'm more so, I'm going to put things into my mind to give me skills to go make good money. Um, and so that's, that's some of the, the issues I've had with college as my personal experience. But 
as a computer science major and engineering uh, on top of that, these are the degrees that are going to allow you to actually pay your student debt off. There's a lot of people who go into debt and they just wait. I think it's 15 years to pay it back. So from a from a practical standpoint, it sucks. You're getting $37,000 of debt. You're spending four plus years of your life. But yes, it is a good salary. As a blanket statement, it is a good degree to get uh, based off of uh, what it helps you do because it is the typical entry level education required to become a software developer. And there's other job categories in here. This is just the largest one, but most of them are going to be very similar. Um, it is a fast growing field. It is one of the higher paying fields and it's one of the fastest growing income fields in terms of how fast you can get to a hundred thousand. The, the jump from the 37,000 here to 50,000 is as quick of a jump as um, you know, this $13,000 jump, it will be this, the same as going from about 60 to 100 on average. Um, that's been my experience, but you know, one case person study of one or two, not, not the best, but I think it's a pretty, pretty fair statement to make that your, your income starting larger grows larger quicker and being more in demand, people are willing to pay you more. So that, so as a blanket statement, yes, you should get a computer science degree, but not everybody in their life um has four years uh there there is a you know there is a a world outside of somebody going straight from high school into college or you know a couple of years after um some people have made mistakes in their life some people um you know maybe they got in trouble with the law and they got locked up or maybe they maybe they were just out partying man maybe their whole their whole existence from 18 to 30 was like look man i'm just gonna date i'm gonna be in a band I'm going to have other priorities. And then by the time you hit 30 and you're sick of living at your parents' house or something like that, and, and no judgments, by the way, I'm just saying, I'm just trying to paint the picture that you may, you may want to go to school, but at 30 or at, you know, age, you may have children. You may have to um, take care of those kids. You may have, you know, a wife, family issues, whatever it may be, but you may have other responsibilities that somebody uh, who's 18 to 22 or 19 to 20, 23, uh, don't, doesn't have to worry about. And so four years isn't necessarily a realistic outlook for you. So what do you do in that instance? And is a computer science degree best for you? <sighs> Maybe not. Uh, it's something to consider. Um, you know, everyone, everyone kind of believes that a, a, as a, as a, almost as a fact that if you don't have a degree, you are going to be homeless, poor, a crackhead, and a failure in life, right? That's that's the paint, paint picture. And I, I buy into it just as much as everybody else. Um, so what I would say is consider what is the alternative? What is the alternative? Well, um, in terms of going to get a CS degree, why do you get a CS degree? You go to be in demand. You go to have a good job, be paid well, live a good life. Um, you basically want financial stability. That's that's my understanding why you go to get the CS degree. It's not because you necessarily love algorithms. Uh, it's not because you, you wanted to get better at calculus. What you wanted uh, was to get a degree. That degree is worth your employment, you being a valued employee, and from there going out and proving that you have these, these skills via the degree and then moving on to to get paid for such such um, skills. So what I would argue is that if you are in a situation in which the idea of, you know, maybe you're a little later in life, let's just say 40, uh, then you're trying to do a career change. Maybe you, I know, I know I have a lot of people who, um, you know, they did more physical jobs, reach out to me and say, what can I do? Is it too late for me to get started in this field? I injured my back. I, I was a carpenter. I was construction, ex-military, and I can't do the job that I wanted. And I want to make sure it's not too late. Not at all. But you may want to open your mind to not doing um, computer science degree. You may want to open your mind to being a self-taught developer, even going to a boot camp uh, because of that. Now, again, as a blanket statement, yes, you should get a CS degree. It will make your life easier in the fact that you're going to be valued a little bit more. It's not the only thing you can do, uh, which I think is why I wanted to make this video because a lot of people really do think it's the only thing that you can do. Uh, typical entry-level education. That's a very good way of putting that, is that this is usually what they expect. Now, 
you have more than that, great. Your life's going to be easier, right? If you have a master's, a PhD, of course it's going to be easier because you're better than the average employee in the education, in the typical entry level education. Now, how do you how do you move forward, right? How do you how do you get better? How do you how do you how do you overcome the fact that you don't have a degree? A lot of different things. One is a boot camp. Boot camp might still um, it's about let's say the average boot camp is about ten thousand dollars. You may not. You may you're going to learn quite a bit in three months. Understand that you're going to have to continue your learning before the boot camp and after the boot camp, and you're still going to be taking out debt, not thirty-seven thousand dollars worth of debt, but ten thousands or so um, dollars of debt, and go from there. You're also going to be learning in-demand skills in that ass in that in that way, and you're going to you're going to uh, be learning things that are used now. One of the, one of the gripes with with uh, traditional education, such as getting a CS degree, is a lot of times you're learning outdated stuff, right? You're learning you're learning stuff that's sometimes ten years behind, and you're learning more theoretical stuff rather than practical stuff, right? Uh, my first job that I got that was in the field, uh, I didn't even know what a wireframe was, right? I didn't know uh, anything like that. I never written any JavaScript, and mind you, I'm go I went into web development, but there's a lot of things that do overlap that I had never been introduced to. And from my understanding of what my senior year was going to be like, and I, I could be wrong, but I have several friends who are CS guys, none of these concepts that are actually used or softwares or technologies were used were going to be introduced. So there, there, there is a reason why, why some boot camp grads can get hired immediately after a three month boot camp. Now, you also are gonna have to be a unique candidate. You're also going to have to, to go and self teach for a very long time. You're gonna to need to be able to convince an employer that takes your call, takes your, interview why you're better or at least as good as someone who's spent their their time pursuing a, a cs degree um so th that because the reason the reason I, I bring this up it's not that i'm c completely pro boot camp i do like boot camps uh for certain people i think about half people half of the people who go into boot camps will actually not be successful in the field i think the other half we're going to be successful no matter what because uh, they're, they're willing to work hard. They just, they couldn't see themselves going and spending, you know, forty almost $40,000 in school, four years of their time. And instead they said, look, I can take three months of my time, three to four months of my time, continue learning before and after that three months, take out one fourth the amount of debt. And in those three years and nine months that I have after that boot camp, and I say, okay, I compare that to the four years I'm going to spend in school, I think I can be at the point where perhaps I'm still earning money and I, I'm saving money. I, you're making money while the other person is taking out debt and going to school and you're actually working in the field via internships and, and, and climb your way up and jump jobs and keep on moving up, right? My first real job, I was still, my first relevant experience was $12 an hour, two hours away doing an internship uh, at a, a web design shop. Did that freelance, moved into um, you know technical documentation at a software company. Then I got my full stack role. Now I'm moving on to my next uh, role starting on Monday. So it is it is possible. It's a lot of hard work, but there's a reason. And uh, in um, I want to say it was Stack Overflow's 2016 developer survey, 90% of developers said that they were self-taught. It's not actually true in terms of. Did they go and get a degree? Yes, about half the developers in that survey had some sort of technical degree. But why did 90% of those developers say they were self-taught? Because that's what it takes to succeed in this field, is you are going to have to be able to self-teach yourself the whole your whole career, especially, 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 especially when you're just breaking in. Because you need to be better than everybody else to, to grow your career, to be able to be more marketable. And especially if you don't have the degree, right? So it's not the only path. It's probably the safest path, especially if you're if you're on the if you're if you're on the younger side, right? And you, you have you have a a more um, traditional look. I probably if I was going home and I didn't have to worry about rent and I didn't have to worry about food and bills and I was living at home, I might I would say I probably had a better chance of finishing my degree. Uh, 
just because there's less stress in my life and things are easier. My, my point being that if you have other responsibilities in life, it may not be a practical thing. But in terms of just pure numbers, talking about CS degree, it is one of the best degrees you can get. It has one of the highest starting salaries. It has one of the highest growth rates. It has a large amount of jobs. And it has one of the highest pay, pay ceilings that you can get. And one of the great things about it is that pay can skyrocket depending on how good of a developer you are. And it gives you the skills to make money on your own. There, there's not a lot of degrees out there that make it as easy to learn skills that you can build a web application, make money. It gives you a lot of very technical skills that you can freelance from any point in the world, the whole digital nomad lifestyle, right? Uh, and it's one, it's it's just one of those great degrees that adds to that. So generally speaking, yes, you should get a CS degree, um, but it's not the only path. There are others. Self-taught is definitely one. Pull yourself up, grind it out. Um, boot camp and you're gonna have to be self-taught one way or the other I assure you uh, whether you get a degree or not and continue on and your education is usually going to continue on your dime or another dime one of the things that that I've talked about is you can always go to a boot camp start working and then go back to school part-time if you really feel like you need that uh, to pad your resume uh, or to even break into the field now the, the reason I, I suggest that is because some employers will actually pay for your education. They will pay a su significant portion or all to get you to stick around. The average employee in, in, this, in this region, in the top tech companies, stays at them, you know, I'm talking like the top 10 or 15, stays at a company for like a year and a half or 1.2 year, uh, years. And... I'm sure there's stress and everything like that, but they want to keep employees. An employer's job nowadays is to find competent people and keep those competent people. And if you're competent and you work hard, they're going to want to keep you, which is why another thing you can do is find an employer that will pay for that at the company that you want to stick around for for a while. So that's my thoughts on should you get a CS degree uh, from a, at, at least as a, I try to give a very unbiased approach to it, um, I know. I I know. Any time that you are a a dropout, um, even though I think I have a you know going to the end of my junior year, I have a pretty open understanding of what entails in a CS degree. Um, people are still just going to tell say at in the comment section that I'm a bitter dropout and I couldn't cut it and everything like that. Uh, <laughs> so there's nothing I could do about that. But uh, I, I hope I was able to give a a fair, accurate. Um, statement as to why you should get a cs degree and why you shouldn't if that isn't necessarily the best path for you because at the end of the day guys you have to be you have to do what's best for yourself blaze your own path in any way you can and that even goes in into you know this so uh thank you for watching the video don't forget to comment like subscribe and share support me on patreon all that good stuff and let me know what your thoughts are you know maybe maybe you guys think i'm completely dead wrong and they self-taught the only way. I don't know. Uh, this is I, I try to base my stuff more off statistics and uh, my 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 personal uh, experience as well. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. If you happen to be looking for a boot camp, I couldn't recommend Dev Mountain any higher. They also include housing with their tuition, so you can get up and go and get started right away. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.